try a jaunt along Greeley's Poudre River Trail. It's a refreshing chance to take in Colorado's crystal clean air and get some exercise, all in one fell swoop. The Poudre River Trail is an eight-mile stretch of paved walkway that links the communities of Greeley, Windsor, and Fort Collins and runs right along the Poudre River. The trail itself is a work in progress. It gets longer every year, and its popularity is growing right along with it. You can bike it, you can roller skate it, you can push a baby buggy. This is a, a prairie trail. It's, a, uh, it's flat because we're really is out on the plains. Uh, we're about 30 miles from the mountains. So this is a great place for people to just to get some exercise, and it's a recreational trail. And it's a chance to feel like you've left the city without the risk of getting lost or having to dodge city traffic on your bicycle. Out here, you're more likely to see cornfields than congested roads. It's just, it's a great place to get away from the world. You, you look at this serene place right here, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I didn't, I hadn't seen it for the first 50 years of my life. So it's just great to make this accessible to people. And accessible really is a fitting description. The nature of the prairie surroundings means the paved trail is nice and flat. It's an easy go for all ages and fitness levels. And Fred says he's even pushed his mother the length of the trail in a wheelchair. Arriving at the trailhead by RV, you can rest assured that you'll find easy access from your rig. Actually, the, the uh, parking areas are adjacent to the trail. We've tried to place them for parking areas so that you could park an RV in, the, uh, in our parking lots, and they're very close. It's just a matter of getting out of your door and walking a couple of feet, put your bike on the trail or your roller skates or whatever. Um, it's, it's very easy to park here. An RV would fit in. We've got two major parking spots right now. One is at Highway 257, just on Kodak's property, and the other is at the under, other end of the constructed trail down on uh, 83rd Avenue. So they're either want to work, and we'd like to have recreation vehicles uh, come see what we look like. Just remember, when taking leave of your RV, be sure to pack snacks and bottled water along with your sunscreen. Amenities along the trail are pretty much what nature provides. Cool breezes and awesome scenery. So dig up your bikes, inline skates, or walking shoes, and get set to hit the trail. With sunny Colorado skies and lush greenery all around you, the Poudre River Trail may be just the break you've been looking for. As they say around the campground, home is wherever you hang your hookup cables. And although there are no RV amenities to speak of out here, there is the opportunity to dry dock and to get acquainted with wildlife species from all around the world. It may look like an odd place to go on safari, but here in the Pawnee National Grasslands, you'll find 193,000 acres of wildlife habitat and plenty of places where you can pull in, set up camp, and enjoy a bird watcher's paradise. This is a migratory stopping area, and we refer them, to them as migrant traps, and they're like little oases in the prairie. This is a quite popular area in uh, spring migration time for uh, RVers to come here. And uh, I know several folks that come and spend a week here uh, just observing and, uh, and being, being observant, sitting still a lot of the time in there, uh, bring their camp chairs and things. And, uh, and during the course of a week's time, uh, there will be many birders in here that are really highly skilled birders. And particularly for novices, this is a wonderful way to, lo uh, to learn. Birders love to share with each other, just like people in their hobbies and to be sure and ask questions, and people will just go to extra lengths to show you uh, uh, and uh, fill you in on what, what to look for and help you, and it's, it's really an exciting place to be. Well, we took Richard up on his advice and asked what we needed to get started. Of course, he was happy to oblige. It's important to have some layering, uh, have uh, some rain repellent clothes for late in the afternoon for our thunderstorms. Uh, have some leather footwear if you're going to walk cross country and bushwhack or some because we do have rattlesnakes but this one needs to be cautious and mostly because we have a lot of prickly pear cactus so it keeps those cactus vines out of, they don't have canvas shoes 
Uh, be sure to take plenty of water, of course. And uh, the typical things, uh, sunscreen, bug repellent, if you may need it sometimes. And uh, I would say then, and of course, for a good white hat. So, uh, but the main thing is just, that, again, back to be prepared for being off-road. Along with the basics, Richard recommends a pair of binoculars with a strap. You can find them for under $100 if you're just starting out, though models range to about 800 bucks. An experienced birder may even bring a spotting scope. Because as Richard says, your view is only as good as your optical equipment. But if you're light on gear or find it difficult to navigate the fields, you can do your best to bring the birds right up to your own RV. One of the things that I've observed here and people traveling through, uh, some of them will bring a temporary type of a, a bird feeding plate, like a large plate that you would use in your backyard or a little tray uh, that they can put on a temporary type of a stand and carry some uh, black oil seeds with them or just a generic grocery store, bird store mix and put that out by the side of their trailer. And then where it's dry, like in these areas, uh, a gallon jug hung upside down with a little, just a slow drip coming from it will attract, uh, hanging from a tree will attract uh, uh, birds to the water source on the ground and you'll get some good sparrow species and things like that. So that's a neat trick to just carry along with you. 